Hello Saints, I greet you once again in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Today is the 13th of November 2019. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we honor you, we give you the praise and the glory. O oh, Spirit of the living God, the mind of God, bring revelation and comfort and understanding and grace upon grace to your people to encourage them, to build them, to strengthen them with strength and might in the inner man as we wait for the coming of the Messiah. May we wait in hope and in joy and in anticipation in the mighty name of Jesus. Saints, it is always a pleasure to be with you, to break bread with you. And today I want to bring you an awesome word that the Lord spoke to me um, yesterday. Early hours of the morning, I, as I normally do around three in the morning, I woke up and I was praying and I usually always pray for the church, for the saints of God, uh, for the move of the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ, for the perfection and for her sanctification. And as I was in the middle of this prayer, the Lord dropped a word, a very powerful word, um, which was very, very exciting. At the moment that I received this word, I was so thrilled, I was elated, because it was God really encouraging and pointing us that we're in the right track, we're in the right direction. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to read a lot of scripture um, and I'm going to be in the book of Isaiah. So I would want to ask you just to really find a quiet place where you can soak in and meditate and really allow the Spirit of God to minister to you and to strengthen you and to encourage you in these days that we're in. Um, so blessings on that. Isaiah is amazing because he is one of the prophets that begins to prophesy about the millennial reign of Christ. Even 2000, even before Jesus is born, Isaiah begins to shed light in what was to come in the time of the millennial. How that the lion will sleep with the lamb and that how a child will play on the hole of the serpent and not get beaten. Isaiah sheds light to the glory that would come that would be ahead of us. And so the word that the Lord dropped to me yesterday, he said, tell my people that her anguish is over. Tell my people that the mourning, that her mourning is over. Tell my church that her burdens and her troubles are over. And I went and I started digging and searching scriptures and I found some scriptures in Isaiah that was in tandem to the word that the Lord you know, spoke to me so vividly and so i want to bring this message to you today and um, i pray that you'll be blessed i'm going to start reading from the book of isaiah chapter 62 and i will go and you know pick scriptures as the lord would lead me verse one it says for zion's sake will i not hold my peace and for jerusalem's sake i will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof is a lamp that burneth and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hesphiba, in thy land be Eulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. So the word there, uh, as Phoebe means, my delight is in her, and be Eulah means she who is married. Verse 11 says, Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Folks, this is where the Lord is now taking the church. We are going to the next, forget about this realm. The Lord is now beginning to speak about the millennial about the reign of Christ, that how we're going to be lifted up, how we're going to be promoted, how the Gentiles are going to come to the light of the saints, 
how the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and the saints of Jehovah have taken over and that the glory of the Lord has risen upon them. This is where we are now entering, folks. The delight of the Lord is in the church right now to bring her now to the place that he has promised her, to the place of her deliverance. For we shall reign with him indeed as kings and as priests unto our God. I want you to turn with me. I'm going to go again to the book of Isaiah chapter 60. And I'll read again scriptures there from verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the people, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Some of these words I'm paraphrasing because they're in the old King James Version. I'll go to verse 7. It says, All the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together unto you. The rams of Noah shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Verse 8, who are these that fly as, as, as a cloud and as the doves to the, wind, to the, to the uh, widows? It is almost as if it's speaking about our lifting up and our going up as the light of the glory of God has risen upon the church. And I'll jump in, I'll go to verse 11. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. Verse 12, For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. I'm going, to, I'm going to jump and I'm going to go to verse 16. It says, Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood brass, and for stone and iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and thine executors righteousness. Violence shall no more be uh, violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting no destruction within thy borders, but thou shalt call thy wall salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall no more be your light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light in thy God, thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light and the days of thy morning shall be ended. This is where for me, the scripture that the Lord had spoken to me, and he said that the days of thy morning shall be ended right there. The days of that morning of thy morning shall be ended. Verse 21, thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. So the Lord is speaking to the church today. And he's saying, the morning of the church is come to an end. Your reproach has come to an end. Your pain, your travail, your labors have come to an end. Because he is getting ready to take his bride away. He's getting ready to lift her up, to rise up upon her, to shine his glory upon her, to promote her, to plant her, to give her, to cause the Gentiles to bring their increase unto her. The Lord's promise is sure and is true. And now we are entered a season that the Lord is about to fulfill his promises. Oh, I feel the anointing on this. Because this is what the Lord is now speaking to the church. Tell her her morning is over. Tell my people to get ready. 
Tell my people that I'm going to give them a new name. Tell them that they're going to be called Beulah, the one that is married. Tell them that they're going to be called Hesphiba, the one that in whom I delight in her. Tell them that I, the Lord, their God, will no longer leave them in reproach, but I'm their salvation and I'm coming and I will be their light and I will be their glory. And this is the word of the Lord in the hour to the church. Folks, we are in a moment where truly, truly the Messiah is coming for his church. Rapture is imminent. I feel so strongly that with, you know, with even with what's happening, and the Lord then just reminded me even all the things that started happening in Israel, the rockets that are being fired towards Israel. And, and, and even this whole peace thing that's going on in, that's been taking place in France. If, if you connect all these things that are happening, surely you sense in the, in the atmosphere palpable, uh, you know, wave that something is taking place, something has shifted, and we have entered into into the very edges of the apse, and as if we are about to fall into something. Does the Bible not say that when they shall say peace, peace and safety, then sudden destruction? We are beginning to see something that's gathering in the Middle East. We are beginning to sense the the, the, the waves of change that are coming. The earth is about to be plunged into darkness, is what Isaiah is saying. Gross darkness shall feel on the people, but the Lord will rise on his people. He will lift them up. They will fly up like clouds, like, like, like doves. They're going to fly up very soon. So saints, hold on. In the mighty name of Jesus, Messiah is coming. I love you very much. Be blessed. Until we speak, shalom.